Hello guys, Sebi's Random Tech back with another video, or in this case it's going to be a series of videos. If you couldn't tell by the title or by the items on the table, today we're talking about ThinkPads. And this is going to be a series of videos where I talk about some good ThinkPad laptops that you can get on a budget. We're going to be looking at different ranges of laptops that you can get within a certain amount of money. We're going to look at laptops you can get for dirt cheap, laptops you can get for a little bit of money, and then if you want to spend more money on something, we are going to cover that too. So I want to make this video because ThinkPad laptops are just the best out there. Uh, they always have been, and even though they aren't as good as they used to be, I still think they hold an edge over the competition in many ways. So some of you might be wondering, why ThinkPad? Why not other laptops? Well, business laptops in general have always been very well built, very reliable, very serviceable and upgradable, and customer support is usually pretty good on them, but ThinkPads have just kind of had an edge a little bit above everything else. And I say this because, first off, all of the innovations that first IBM and then Lenovo brought to the table with these laptops, uh, the ThinkLight, which lit up the keyboard years before Apple began doing the backlight thing on their keyboards, uh, the drainage system, all of these have it. Basically, if you spill water on your keyboard, it's not going to destroy your laptop. At the very worst, you might have to replace the keyboard. Um, I have not personally tested this, but I know other people who spilled water or whatever on their laptop and then managed to keep it working. Uh, the overall durability of these machines, uh, this T420 here was my personal T420 for a while. And uh, last year I was doing a skit, we were rehearsing, and I was holding it and I was reading the script off it and it slipped down my hand. It fell about 15 feet and um, it came out fine. They got a little bit scratched up on the top. But otherwise, it's perfectly fine. The computer didn't even shut off. So, these computers are very durable. Even to this day, um, they're still very rugged machines. Uh, and these older ones especially, they're just built to last. The rumor is they're made out of the same material as Nokia phones. Uh, but also, the upgradability of these machines, the serviceability... Uh, Lenovo's customer support on these is really good. You can go on their website, you can find drivers and software for any model. Even going back to the IBM era, you can find uh, drivers and software for those ThinkPads. You have complete disassembly guides, you have complete service manuals, and uh, you even have uh, replacement part numbers. Uh, for you to be able to order replacement parts for your laptop. And Lenovo supports these things for a long time. I mean, uh, like the T420, T430, these came out six, seven years ago, and then the T410, which I don't have here on display, that came out eight years ago, and they still are releasing BIOS updates for them, and you can still get a brand new battery for them off Lenovo's website. Granted, you're going to pay about as much for it as these laptops are worth, but the fact that Lenovo is still selling a replacement battery for an eight-year-old computer, that's pretty awesome. Um, so their support for these things is really good. Now, their customer service in terms of talking to them on the phone and fixing problems that way, I've heard mixed reviews of. But in terms of supporting their products, I think they do a very good job of that. And Lenovo is also a company that is willing to admit when they've made a mistake. Like on the T440 series, they removed the physical buttons for the track point, and everybody complained. So on the T450, they brought the buttons back. And then after they switched to the uh, chiclet style, island style keyboard, a lot of people complained. And while they haven't brought the seven row classic keyboard back to their mainstream ThinkPads, they did release the ThinkPad 25, which brings back the classic keyboard layout and design. And they may still offer such a line of laptops with the classic keyboard in the future. Uh, so. Lenovo's definitely not a perfect company. I mean, in the end, they're just there to make money. Uh, but they've made some really darn good laptops. And there's other great innovations with these laptops. I already mentioned the ThinkLight and the spill-proof keyboard. Um, the modularity of these machines, uh, like being able to swap out the optical drive for a hard drive, and in some cases, another battery. Uh, being able to upgrade the processor in some of the older units, as well as the RAM and the hard drive. 
one of my personal favorite things, the track point, the nipple, the nub, whatever you want to call it. Pretty much every ThinkPad has them. They always have since the very beginning. When most laptops had a trackball, IBM introduced the track point, which is just a great invention. And I'm glad that Lenovo still has it on laptops to this day. A lot of younger people, a lot of naysayers, they're like, ah, the track point is just for older people. It's just for old timers. Do I look like an old timer to you? I mean, seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm 19 years old. Like, do I really look like an old timer to you? <laughs> but really, the track point is so much better than a touchpad. Like, the MacBook touchpads are the only things the only pointing devices that come close to being as good as a track point. The way I see it, the track point is kind of like the stick shift of laptops. Everyone's used to a touchpad, everyone knows how to use it, and then track point is really hard to learn how to use, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. In fact, it's better than a touchpad. Stick shift to me is the same way. Not everyone knows how to do it. Um, it's hard to learn how to do it, but once you've learned how to drive stick shift, you will find that it's usually better than driving an automatic in many ways. So enough of me rambling on about what makes ThinkPads in general so great. Now we're going to um, divide these laptops into categories and then I'm going to be making separate videos on all of them. So the first category is IBM ThinkPads. So this might seem kind of silly, but yes, they're is a difference between IBM and Lenovo ThinkPads. Significant differences, not only in just design, but the architecture of the machines themselves, the processors and the motherboards and chipsets used. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about IBM ThinkPads versus early Lenovo ThinkPads and what makes them different and which one you should go for if it's coming down to an early Lenovo ThinkPad versus an IBM ThinkPad, that sort of thing. And we're going, then we're going to be talking about the early Lenovo ThinkPads. I'm going to call them the Core 2 Duo ThinkPads. So basically the T60, which I have here, the T61 and the T400. And then I'm also going to talk about the X-Series counterparts and then the W-Series counterpart that was introduced later. And then we're going to talk about the first through third generation I-Series ThinkPads. So the T410, T420, T430, which use first, second, and third generation core i5 and i7 processors. And that's the newest that I'm going to go into a lot of detail on, because these are the newest ThinkPads that you can get for a pretty cheap price and get good performance on. With the newer ThinkPads, which I call the modern ThinkPads, both in terms of design and in terms of the internal architecture, uh, they're going to be more expensive, and the price-to-performance ratio won't be quite as good as what you're going to get with some of these later uh, classic ThinkPads. Uh, but I'm going to talk about modern ThinkPads, like even the newest ThinkPads that are offered, even though I don't really have that many on hand other than a T440p. Uh, now, all these numbers to non-ThinkPad fans are going to sound like a bunch of baloney. What's he talking about? What's the T61? What's the T400? What's the X-Series? We'll explain that in the future videos. Uh, but I just wanted to give a brief introduction to this video series, uh, what the overall idea is of this video series. Uh, basically, for the average Joe to find a cheap but decent laptop that they can use either as a daily driver, a second daily driver, a backup, a beater laptop, an experimental laptop, like something to throw Linux on and then just mess around with coding on. Uh, something to give to your kid, your younger sibling, something to use for school, um, something like that, or just something to have fun play games on. Now, I'm going to say right now, if you are a computer enthusiast, a ThinkPad enthusiast, or a collector, these videos may not be tailored entirely to you. These videos are meant for more so for the general person, the average person, who's just looking for a decent laptop. So... I will talk a little bit about some of the more advanced, sophisticated stuff, but I'm mostly going to be focusing on things that the average person can do. So that is the introduction to this video series. I'm going to be uploading videos whenever I can. I'm starting to get really busy with school. We just had our midterms, and um, I'm going on a trip to New York in a couple of days. By the time you see this video, I might already be there, so I'll be probably making a video about that. And then 
over the next couple of months. I hope to get all these videos out. Um, there's going to be three, maybe four or five of these videos. So, hope you guys enjoyed this introductory video. Stay tuned for part one, which I plan on uploading around the same time as this intro video, so you have something to watch. And then stay tuned for the rest of the videos that will be coming after.